Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss measures of center and variation. Okay, um, in particular, we're going to find the mean, median, and mode, and the range, sample standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. Okay, so we have this example data set of Navy physical fitness assessment, the 1.5 mile run in minutes for 45 sailors. So what I want to do is first thing I want to copy this data and put it in Excel because we're going to find these measures of center and measures of variation using Excel. So highlight it, press control C, go to Excel, press control V. Down here, let's go ahead and make it match destination formatting. Okay. Right now in a single cell, there's all this data. I need to get every observation into its own cell. So let's go to text to columns delimited. Okay, it's going to take the commas and it's going to break it based off of where that comma is. Okay, next, finish. Okay. And then I want to control X, control, oops, control X, control V, control X, control V. Basically, I need to get it all into one column. And let's go ahead and label this column. So this is the 1.5 mile run times in minutes. Okay, so this is my data. So now to get some um, sample statistics, okay, the measures of center and measures of variation that I'm looking for here, I'm gonna use the data analysis tool packet. If you don't have this over here under the data ribbon, you need to go to File, Options, Add-ins, Analysis Tool Packet, press Go. Make sure this is checked. Press OK. Okay, now it should be showing up, okay? It doesn't show up under all the ribbons. It only shows up if you press Data. Then here it is over on the side. Okay, once you've pressed it, you have a long list of things you can do. Right now, what we want to do is the descriptive statistics. So highlight that and then press OK. And I'll delete what I have here. So my input range is going to be this data. Okay, highlight your data. Um, grouped by columns. Yep, it's all in the same column. Make sure that labels in first row is checked if you've labeled your data, which you should. The output range. Click in that cell. This is where it's going to output. It will output the descriptive statistics here in C1. All right, and we're going to check that we want summary statistics. We don't need all this other stuff quite yet. Press OK. I'm going to highlight these. Double click in the middle. So let's see what we have. We have the mean. That's an important one. Standard error, we're not going to talk about quite yet. Median, we're going to talk about that and the mode. Those are our measures of center that I want to talk about right now, okay? So starting with the mean. The mean, this is a sample mean, okay? So remember, sample mean is X bar. All right, so I'll write it there, X bar. X bar is what 10.208, or 10.208 minutes, okay? So that's the sample mean. Remember, if it was a population mean, meaning if I had data on every member of the U.S. Navy and their 1.5 mile run, run times, then I wouldn't be using XBARF. If I had population data, I would be using mu, right? Remember mu, okay? That's mu, right? But I don't have population data, so I don't know mu. Okay, next I have the median, 10, uh, which is 9.7 five that's the middle most observation okay so if I were to sort my data so let's highlight the data press data then sort okay okay 9.75 is the middle observation so here it is I have 45 observations and this is the one that's lying directly in the middle okay it makes sense that the mean is higher than the median Okay, because in previous video or in previous discussions, we've uh, made 
the frequency histogram graphs and the distribution is skewed to the right. Okay, so these observations over here on the right are going to skew the mean, make the mean the center uh, where the mean is. It's going to be pushed by that really high observation. But the median, which is just the measure of the centermost observation, that one's not going to be pushed by outliers. So that's the benefit of the median. It's not pushed by outliers the same way that the mean is. All right, next let's talk about the mode. Now, the mode in this um, data analysis tool pack, right, it's a little strange um, because so the mode should be the observation that's occurring the most often, right? And it doesn't really make sense to have mode as a me measure of central tendency uh, when you have continuous type data like this, right? So. Right, so like 9.1, 9.31 minutes, basically these two people cross the finish line at the same time. But that doesn't mean that most people did uh, cross at that time. Well, no, because you, actually it happened more than just that one time where someone would cross at the same time. So at 10.21, it also happened, right? So there's actually, there's more than one mode to this data, uh, if we wanted to find them all, there is an Excel way that we can do that. We can press equals mode dot multi. Okay, if I click on that and double click on it and then highlight all my data. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit it up here in this close the parentheses, and then press enter. And you see it does all four modes. So there's four modes here. It's I don't know how Excel chooses that one to give, but there are four modes. Um, OK. It's not the best measure of central tendency, again, when you have continuous type data. Really, this median and this mean are the best measures of central tendency here. Okay, next we have the, sam the standard deviation. Uh, sample, sample deviation, is, the notation for this is S. Okay, so this is a measure of variation. Sample variance is also a measure of variation. And the symbol for this is S squared. Okay, and these basically are measures of how spread out the data is. Okay, so why is it S and S squared and not sigma and sigma squared? Okay, recall what does sigma look like? Like sigma looks like this guy and sigma squared looks like this guy. And we would only use these if I had population-based data, right? So once again, just like mu, where I would only use them if I had data on every member of the Navy, which I don't, but if I did, then these uh, would be sigma and sigma squared instead of S and S squared. S and S squared are for the sample, okay, which 45 members of the Navy is definitely a sample and not the entire Navy. Okay, kurtosis and skewedness, we're going to skip those for right now. And lastly, we're going to talk about the range. Here's our range. What is the range? The range is the min or the max minus the min. Okay, so now lastly to find the coefficient of variation, we don't see that in the descriptive statistics that's been provided by Excel. So we actually need to calculate that. So CV, which is the coefficient of variation, okay, so recall by definition what that is, is S divided by X bar. Or in other words, the standard deviation divided by the sample mean. Okay, so I'm going to write an equal sign. And I'm going to highlight this cell where the standard deviation is. I'm going to press divided by the little fraction bar and then the mean. And I'll press enter. Okay, so there we go. There is the coefficient of variation. A lot of times that is given as a percentage. 
So if I press this up top here, it'll go ahead and convert that format into a percent, which is nice.